Hi, this is Paul from finishyoursong.com and in this video I want to have a look at contact and specifically configuring multiple outputs from contact. Now there's two reasons why you would want to do that. One is if you are using a multi-rack. I've loaded a multi-rack here, it's the first one in Evolve, which comes with a set of multis. Most instruments in the contact uh, library or from native instruments don't actually come with pre-configured multis, but Evolve does. And it's perhaps worth asking the question why you would want to use a multi. Well, the answer in short is that you can have several instruments loaded into one instance of contact, or you can have one instrument loaded into several instances of contact. The only problem is every instance of contact requires more CPU cycles in order to work properly, which means you have to increase your buffer size, you're putting a strain on your CPU, whereas if you stack all of your instruments into, into one instance of contact in a rack, then you don't get that overhead on your CPU. You might want to layer sounds, that's fine, but if you want to, for example, load an orchestral multi so that every time you load that particular multi you've got violins, violas, cellos, bass, horns, trumpets, trombones, all pre-configured with your favorite settings, there's a problem in that by default contact comes with one stereo output. Now you can have up to 64 instruments loaded into a rack in contact and these here at the top allow you to see the 64 separate instruments that you might have loaded but they're of relatively little use if they're all stuck on one output. Contact actually comes with 64 outputs that you can address but unhelpfully it doesn't have an equivalent number of output channels. One reason for this is you can actually choose how to configure the output channels. You can configure them as mono, stereo or surround sound which would take one, two or six of those outputs for each channel you configure in this little mixer here. Another reason why you might want to split your outputs is if you're running one of their Abbey Road kits. I've got a studio drummer here but if we just have a look at the mixer here you'll see that you've got different channels for kick, snare, hi-hat, the toms, run three channels, four channels in this studio drummer, tambourine, um, whatever that is, that's some form of percussion, and then you've got your overheads, your stereo overhead, your room mic and your mono overhead. So you might want to set up a set of outputs so that you can access all of those. If you're mixing studio drummer either you use this as a sub mixer and then you're constantly jumping back and forth between your mixer in contact for your drums and your stereo pair that would appear in your mixer or you replicate these as individual outputs which creates an individual channel on your mix console in your DAW. Much easier to work with when you're trying to balance all your different levels against each other and against the other instruments in your arrangement. It's not to say you wouldn't want to have the facilities that Studio Drummer and the other Abbey Road drums offer you. They've got some very nice SSL based EQ, um, we've got a compressor, tape saturation and transient designer as well as all the effects that you have available to you in your own DAW. So there's a lot of power there that you don't want to lose but on the other hand what you want to be able to do is control it better. And what you need to be able to do is to configure these outputs so that you can address them and that's what I want to have a look at. To do it it's a one-time deal. I'm just going to close this instance of Studio Drummer for a moment. In fact we're going to get rid of it altogether. I'll just delete that 
track. The reason for that is I'm about to change the default configuration for contact and I don't want multiple instances open to confuse the issue. I want one instance that I'm working with. So to add channels what you do is you come into here and this little box pops up. Now channels in this sense is rather confusing because this is where you put one, two or six depending on whether you want to add mono tracks, stereo tracks or uh, as I said surround sound tracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 15 tracks. This will take me, this will use 32 outputs and that's more than enough. Now I want it to start at where aux1 is now. If I don't do this all of these tracks that I create won't be assigned to an output here. What I then want to do is to have the tracks that I add in a sending output assignment. I don't want to delete my existing tracks that I've got and I want to make this my default configuration. Hit that and we'll see what happens. Oh, there we go. It was saved as default and now I've got all these extra addressable outputs. So having created these channels it doesn't actually take effect anywhere other than visually in front of us until we reinitialize contact. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that. We'll get rid of it there. We'll add it back in. And there we have contact coming up with all of our channels. Now these um, auxiliaries I want to reallocate aux1 I want to allocate to an unassigned output unassigned to. Okay. Yep, it's reminding me that I've got to change this. So I don't want unassigned three, unassigned four, Okay, as you can see when I did that we still have a lot of other unassigned outputs so we could carry on adding channels all the way up to as I say there are 64 outputs so we can go all the way to outputs 63 and 64 but in this case we'll be happy with that again and close it down Get, con get rid of contact, bring it back and now my aux is... Ah. What I didn't do was save. Okay, it did warn me. So we'll go, to, we'll go through that again. Okay, so this time we'll save the current output selection as default for all formats. Now it's interesting to note 
that you can save different formats for the standalone version of Contact as well as the primary VSD plugin. But you can also save the format for the 8 output and 16 output versions of the VST plugin. This is unique to VST if you're running AAX or any other incarnation of, of Contact you can't do this. But Contact does offer you three versions with multiple outs. So in theory, although I'm not going to put it to the test, you could configure the 16 output version um, as eight stereo pairs or six stereo for pairs and four mono. Now bearing in mind that our drum kit had bass drum, snare drum, hi-hat, mono room mic, you could in theory have mono channels for your mono drums and stereo for things like the overheads, toms, percussion and you could have a default configuration that was purely for your drums. The knowledge base on Native Instruments website does warn against trying to have multiple configurations of the same plugin running at once. So I would suggest if you're going to just use one configuration you set up everything as stereo and route it all accordingly. So we're going to save this for all formats and now when we load contact it should come up yeah there we are we've got our auxes configured on separate channels so all is to the good <clears throat> so how do you use that in practice so we'll just get rid of that and we'll load that multi back from evolve Right. So we've now loaded our multi and if we look at our outputs, ah, they're not there and that's because the output configuration is saved with the multi. So what we want to do is to go in here and say reset the output section to the target default or you can clear the output section and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument. So if you're already dealing with multis you can actually do it that way. Um, but what we'll do is reset the output section badang, and then we can go into for example our second one here and we can go yeah we want to go to stereo 2. So now if we hit space bows we should see that channel active yeah, highlight it first there we go now I'm not hearing anything there's a very good reason for that we've only got one output active let me just close that down a minute we've only got one output active in Cubase so if we go into our VSG instruments and we come into here we can activate the extra outputs that we've created so we'll just go up to five open that again and this time we hit that and Voila. Um, let's add this one. We'll put that on there. Highlight it so the keyboard's active and so that's it. So you have to configure your outputs in contact, but then in Cubase you have to make your outputs active so that you can actually see that here the end result in Cubase and if we have a look at the mixer you'll see that the extra outputs that I've added are now showing in the mixer 
They don't show in the project window, but they do show in the mixer. And that is how you go about configuring extra outputs in contact. Now I just want to have a look at the drums before we finish. So here's my second instance of contact and we've now got the default configuration. And what I want to do is add in a drum kit. So we'll go back to Studio Drummer, the Session Kit Lite. And there it is. And so we've now got that's all working fine. What I want to do is to configure the drums to be different. So we just we have a look at the mixer in here and you come to the settings tab you can kick you can pick what you want so we'll put the kick on two, snare on three, hi-hat four Tom's five, 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 tambourine on six, that on six, overhead stereos, the master, stereo one, the room will be seven, the mono will be eight. So we've now enabled that across eight individual outputs. And if we go back into here and we open the instruments for here, this is our second one, unhelpfully labeled contact five as well. That's it, we've highlighted all of the eight outputs. If we open up our mixer, we'll see that we've got our eight outputs there and if I open that up and set a groove going well, I'll flip back and you should see those eight channels all showing outputs from this particular groove we'll get something with um, oh. we'll get something with some toms in there we are, um, just so that we can see the toms going. And I'll leave you with the sound of Studio Drummer split through Cubase's internal mixer. It's not the easiest thing in the world to get your head round, but the great thing is once you've done it once, you don't have to do it again. That configuration then stays with your version of contact until you choose to change it. It's a one-time thing. And when it's done, it's done. So, until next time, you take care of yourselves. <laughs>